Hey folks, Sophia here. Today I'm going to be going over ESS bubble mechanics and warp in and how all of that stuff works. Um, the main goal is going to be showing how you can warp to range on the ESS beacon even if the beacon itself is bubbled. And that is obviously super useful for FCs who are trying to set up at range or scouts who are trying to come in. Like, you know, the beacon's bubbled, you want to warp at range for whatever reason, this is how you do it. Uh, I'm going to be sort of taking a <laughs> first principles approach and going through all the nitty gritty mechanics and my belief of how CCP's uh, code flow works. Um, uh, so you'll have that to fully understand it. If you want the quick and dirty version though, just have like a really high bookmark and warp to that range and then you'll ignore bubbles. But why, why does that happen is the interesting part. <laughs> All right, so uh, yeah, that's what we're gonna cover now. Um, first up, the ESS grid is called uh, dead space. And the main thing is you can't warp to things on it, right? So I have, I want you to take note, I have a bookmark over to the side here and another one up high. And this one's more than 150 kilometers away. I should be able to warp to it, but I cannot. There is natural phenomena. And that's just the nature of dead space. You can't warp on grid. <clears throat> and it's not just uh, inside of like the no cloaking zone, gate activation zone stuff but anywhere on grid. So even if somebody like a fleet mate was miles and miles away, or I guess miles isn't very far and we was like thousands of kilometers away, um, as long as they're on grid, which means they show up on my overview, I still can't warp to them. I've got the same warning about not warping. Um, yes, so that's one thing about dead space grids. Much more uh, interesting and relevant to us is how it works when you're warping from off grid uh, to the ESS. And basically what happens is no matter where you try and warp, your end vector point warp location ends up being the ESS beacon. Um, let me show you what that means. So here's the ESS. We have a bookmark over to the side and I'm going to head off and then warp back in and I'm going to try and warp to this bookmark at range. Um, so I'm going to be trying to warp to the bookmark. So my vector's going to be like over in this direction slightly. The game's going to detect that I'm landing on a dead space grid and shunt me over so that I land on the beacon instead. So ESS side, let's go at 50. Why not 50? 50 is a good number. So I'm trying to warp to my bookmark at 50. Um, and the game is going to send me to the beacon at 50 instead. just like so. And if I had tried to warp to this bookmark at zero, it would take me to the beacon at zero. If I tried to warp to the bookmark at 100, it would take me to the beacon at 100. And I know this is kind of like, you know, even, but that's not relevant. Like if there was, again, a fleet mate who was like way up in the sky, way off to the side, and I tried to warp to him at 10, I'd end up on the beacon at 10. So you're sort of like, what you're trying to warp to gets redirected to the beacon. Um, and that seems really useful because if you are a fleet trying to like camp this beacon, people have to end up here, right? So you can sort of like force fights or you can escape by burning off really far on the ESS, which is probably the more common use of it. Anyways, uh, let's take a look at bubbles here. So bubble mechanics um, are pretty strange on the ESS and quite counterintuitive. So I'm going to put the bubble up um, on the beacon at zero. Very common technique. As we just said, you have to land on the beacon, right? That's your sort of end warp in point. So if we have it bubbled and people have to warp here, like they're going to get stuck in this bubble, which is very nice if we have brawlers who want them at zero or if we have a kiting fleet set up at range and people are getting stuck here at zero. Um, but it works a little bit differently than non-ESS grids. So let's see what happens when we warp to the ESS here. All right, so we're gonna warp to the ESS at 100. You can see our bubble still up. And we're coming in for a landing, trying to land at 100. And instead, 
we hit the bubble and get sucked right to the beacon at zero. Now this is what is should be surprising. Like we tried to warp here at 100. There was a bubble intersecting our warp vector. So naturally the game was like, hey, you can't land here. There's a drag bubble, I guess this would be. But we also didn't land at the edge of the bubble, which is what you would expect on most grids. And instead we ended up right on the beacon at zero. And this is giving us a hint to what's going on behind the scenes in CCP's code. Basically, it's detecting that there's a bubble in line with our warp vector. And then rather than trying to figure out where you're supposed to land on the bubble, it's just cutting away and taking you to the ESS beacon at zero. All right, so we're trying to land at 100. When we enter warp, so just a brief aside, the position you're going to, uh, the where you're gonna land is calculated when you enter warp. And then if things change on grid as you're in warp, it doesn't matter if bubbles go up or bubbles go down, it's the state of the grid when you enter warp is calculating where you're gonna land. So we're entering warp, we're saying we wanna land here. The game's detecting there's a bubble on our path. It's then also detecting that there we're on an ESS dead space grid, and then it's ignoring everything else after that and just sending us to the beacon at zero. It doesn't care where the bubble is. So this is much more apparent if we uh, bubble this bookmark over to the side instead. So you'll note this is in line with uh, Customs Office 10. So that seems like a good place for the bubble. So the beacon is definitely not bubbled. Our bookmark is bubbled. And we're heading to Customs Office 10. And you can see it's in line there, right? So we're going to be passing through the bubble on the way to the beacon. So it honestly doesn't matter here whether we try and warp to the beacon or the bookmark, because they're both in line with this bubble here. Let's just say we're trying to warp to the beacon at 100. So our bubble's still up. We're gonna be passing through it. The game's detecting that we want to go to the beacon at 100. There's a bubble in our path, therefore it's going to redirect where we uh, land. And then it detects that we're on the dead space grid. So it cuts away and sends us to the beacon at zero, which looks very, very weird. We didn't land at 100. We weren't stopped by the bubble. The bubble instead, just by our vector initially passing through it, sent us got detected by the game and sent us to the beacon at zero. Um, and this is also gonna happen, hopefully this bubble stays up, let me be quick here. Even if we're not warping, even if we don't end up in line with the bubble. So the bubble's over to the side here, and then the beacon is in the middle. I'm gonna try and warp to the bookmark at 100. Bubble's still up, let's go, go, go. All right, so I'm warping to the bookmark at 100. Bubble's still up, even if it goes down. We're now in warp, so it won't matter anymore. So again, we're trying to, the game's detecting that our vector, our initial vector, we land on beacon at zero. So we tried to land on this bookmark at 100. The game detected our initial vector had a bubble. Since we're on the ESS grid, it stopped thinking after that, doesn't care where the bubble is, and just sends us to the beacon at zero. Okay, and then one last little demo here, let me just go refresh this guy, is that if your um, initial vector doesn't intersect a bubble, then obviously the game's not gonna care about it, right? So let me quickly refresh this guy. And then I'll summarize everything we've learned here and then show you the final trick. Not too much longer. Okay, so we have a bubble up to the side and we're going to be warping to the beacon directly. So we're not gonna be interacting with this bubble at all. And as expected, it doesn't affect us at all. Okay, off we go. So we just saw that if we warped to the ESS side bookmark that's bubbled at 100, the game detects that there's a bubble in our path and then without thinking anymore, it sends us to the beacon at zero. If we warp to the beacon at 100, there's a bubble on grid, but it's over to the side, it's not intersecting our path, and therefore it's not going to affect us at all. The same as it wouldn't affect us 
on a regular grid, as we'll see here. So yes, there's a bubble here. It wasn't on our path, therefore it didn't affect us at all, and we ended up at 100 on the beacon. But if we warp to this bookmark, there is a bubble on our path. The game detects that and sends us to the beacon at zero. All right, so the last step is we're gonna bubble the beacon at zero and then warp to this bookmark up here at range. And let's go through how the game's calculating it again. So our initial vector is gonna be coming up to this bookmark. The bubbles are down here. We're not gonna have any bubbles at all. So the game's going to say, you're trying to land on this bookmark at 100. It checks for bubbles along your vector. There aren't any. So then it just says, all right, because you're on an ESS grid, you're trying to warp to this bookmark at 100, we're gonna send you to the beacon at 100. Same as we did at like the very first example. If you try and warp to this bookmark at 50, no bubbles on the path, you get sent to the, book, uh, the beacon at 50. If there was a bubble way up here and we warped to it, then it would say there is a bubble in your path, you're going to the beacon at zero. Critically though, the game does not check for bubbles on the resulted path to the beacon, only on your initial path. So uh, we're trying to warp to this bookmark at range. The game checks for bubbles, sees there's none, says, okay, you're on a dead space grid. Therefore, instead of warping to the bookmark at range, you're gonna warp to the beacon at range. Even if the beacon's bubbled, it's not checking for bubbles again. It's already past that point in its code. It only checks for bubbles on the initial vector. So one more time, we have our initial vector. We're saying as we enter warp, we wanna to go to this bookmark at 50. The game checks for bubbles, says that there's no bubbles along your path. That's the only time it checks for bubbles. It then says, oh, you're on a dead space grid. Therefore, you don't go to this beacon at 50. You go, sorry, you don't go to this bookmark at 50. You go to the beacon at 50. It doesn't matter that this beacon's bubbled. It's already checked for bubbles. It's not checking again on the resulted path. So putting that into practice here, the beacon's bubbled and we have a bookmark that is not bubbled, essentially. There's no bubbles on line with it or in line with it from where we're coming in. So the grand uh, finale here is we can imagine that there is, you know, some blaster vexor fleet sitting on the beacon at zero with it bubbled. We can see it on D scan bubbled. And they're thinking, ha, no one can warp to us. We're on the ESS bubbled. If they warp to us, they're gonna get sucked in at zero and we're gonna use our blasters and newts and drones and just destroy them, brawl them down. And then here I am coming in my rail harpy fleet or something. And they see us coming in. They think we're gonna get sucked into the bubble but instead we land at range. And that's because we didn't warp to anywhere on the ESS grid that was bubbled. Well, like we did end up there, but we our initial vector was to something that wasn't bubbled. So the game checked, saw that it wasn't bubbled, and then redirected us down to the beacon at range and did not check for bubbles again. All right, I think I've said that about 10 times, so I'm sure you understand it now. Um, uh, but yeah, so that's how that works. So you can ignore bubbles on the ESS and warp to different ranges as long as you have a bookmark that isn't bubbled and doesn't have a path to, um, with a bubble, you know, intersecting it, with the path intersecting the bubble. So in practice, if you're a industrious person who does a lot of stuff with ESSs, you can go around like your home systems and just put bookmarks on the ESS like arbitrarily high or low somewhere that they'll never get bubbled so that like there's never gonna be a bubble up here. So that means that you can always warp to the ESS at range just by warping to the bookmark at range, no matter how many bubbles are on the lower part of the grid. Um, so you can do that like all around your home system if you want to have home defense fleets that can warp at ranges. You could do it like in your ratting system if you want to go scout it. If you're a scout, you can have them bookmarks all over the place. You could put them in hostile staging um, or around hostile systems that you're roaming in. Basically, as long as you have a really high or low or you know, just distant bookmark that has no chance of being bubbled, then if the ESS is bubbled, it doesn't affect you. You can still warp to whatever range you want on the beacon. Um, yeah, and that's about it. So, 
I don't really have anything else to say. <laughs> um, this is the mechanics as of like November 23rd, 2023. I don't know if it'll ever change. Um, uh, if this knowledge like becomes more widespread and people start utilizing it, I'm not sure if it'll cause more fights with people able to warp in to the ESS at range or if it would cause less fights because people don't feel safe on the ESS at zero. Anyways, this is the mechanics, how it works. Um, hope you got something from it.